Uh, it's Tony Loco Soto. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I was born in Sunset Lutheran Hospital, and I was raised between Sunset Park and Park Slope. Um, as a kid, I was, uh, was a pretty bad child, man. Um, I didn't really know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just know that I was always fighting, um, always getting into trouble, and uh, you know, I was just a badass kid. Um, as far as living conditions, uh, it's a bit of a mixed emotion thing. Uh, um, I grew up pretty rough. Um, my mother had me very young. She had me at 18 years old. She was very young. Um, and, you know, we bounced around a lot. Um, I mean, a lot. I went from shelter to shelter. Um, you know, she had an addiction, so it was really hard for us to kind of get a place of our own. So I was dealing with a lot at a very young age, seen a lot that I shouldn't have seen. Um, then I was with my grandmother from ages five to six, had my seventh birthday in Staten Island with my grandmother. And my mother got out of rehab and kind of went and picked me back up. And that's when she got a Section 8 apartment in Park Slope, Brooklyn, where we pretty much stood there for the remainder of my adolescence. Um, just depends on the time of the day. Like in the summer, I would get up, grab my skateboard, go outside, go skate. Um, as far as that, uh, I played football. We went outside, we played basketball, baseball, but primarily I was skateboarding mostly. Um, when I was growing up, and it's funny because he follows me on Instagram now. Um, I used to watch the Sorry video a lot. Um, like Jeff Raleigh was one of my favorite skateboarders now. It's crazy that he's a fan of mine right now. Um, he shows a lot of love on Instagram, but Jeff Raleigh was one of my favorite skateboarders. Um, Louis Barletta, um, a lot of these guys, like Andrew Reynolds, those two guys were amazing. Um, I have a lot of mixed emotions about that. I feel like where I was growing up, it was like I couldn't fit in with a lot of people. I don't know what it was, or maybe it was me, or I was just over the top, but Never really fit in any clicks. You know, you have clicks and everything. You have clicks, these guys who play basketball, clicks who play baseball, clicks with the skateboard. I just never fit in with any of them because when it came to the skateboarding, when I went over to like Owl's Head, a lot of those kids, they all came from money. And I really didn't come from money. They all went out to go eat and drink and do stuff. Not drink alcohol, but you know, they went out to go hang out and, and I never had money for it. So I was always feeling like left out in a way. Then with those kids who play basketball, they all had money too from Park Slope. So I kind of never really fit in with people because I never really had the money like that. So it was kind of kind of rough in a way. I pretty much just ate it. You know, I became, you know, who I am now. I just knew I had to work for things and I knew I didn't come from much, um, but whatever I had, I cherished. And like, that's kind of what embedded into me to this day. Like anything I have, I cherish and I pour into it. Oh man, this, this sky's the limit. I mean, we don't have enough time in the day. To, I mean, we would scale buildings, like literally scale buildings. Like it's fucking out of this world. We would climb up the side of buildings. We climbed up the side of the school 124. You can look it up. Like that school's huge. We it had little ridges on the side of the school. We climbed all the way up to the roof and then climbed down. We'd play manhunt. We uh, played ding dong ditch. Like we'd order food and <laughs> rob the guy and <laughs> run. <laughs> A oh, horrible, horrible Chinese food almost every day. Um, uh, I would sneak Colt 45s as like a 15, 16 year old. I would drink St. Ives. I would drink little beers here and there. Like I would eat whatever I wanted to, cheeseburgers, McDonald's, all that stuff. I didn't know any better. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I use a lot from my past to fix my future. I know that like, Growing up the way I did, like, I didn't know any better. I didn't have any guidance. And I feel like that's my job now to be that guidance and to be that influence for the, the youth now. But I wouldn't change anything, anything at all. I, I think it's made me who I am, a strong motherfucker. Um, my very first fist fight would be my mother was getting hit by one of her boyfriends and I had to be like 
four, five, I remember possibly. And I remember her getting hit and I ran over to him. I said, you're not gonna hit me. I remember distinctively, you're not gonna hit my mama. And I punched a dude right in the stomach twice and he fucking threw me across the room. <laughs> That's my very first fist fight. Um, is I hit him with my fist, uh, but that, that was my very first one. And uh, besides that on the street, as a teenager or, or I mean, we were bouncing around from shelter to shelter. I, I've had so many fights, I, it's hard to, I fought it so much.